All right, on to part two of this model builder thing. So just picking up from where we left off before, we've got a, a new model that we've created. So if we go over to our catalog window, um, we can look and see we've got this toolbox we created a moment ago and this new model crossing that we're adding some tools to. And if you happen to have closed it, so let's just close it, let's save and close. Um, we can go back to our catalog, right click on our model within our toolbox and go to edit. And this will come back up again. Um, so if it does crash on you, whatever, make sure you've saved and then you'll be able to get that back. So I'm gonna uh, continue with the analysis here. So I'm gonna move a couple things around. Um, what's nice about the model builder is it contains, it keeps the connections between different data sets and tools and it allows you to rearrange things that make sense to you. So I'm doing most of my steps for the Hydra line, so I'm going to have that kind of be my top line that I'm going to follow from left to right. So I've got a select by attribute um, that I'm going to select the subset of the Hydra lines. So I did this connection and noticed the color changed, but a select by attribute, you know I need to supply a where clause. So in order for us to provide some detail here, I'm going to double click on that and get the full options for this tool. So I've got my hydro lines as my input uh, layer. I'm going to create a new selection, and now I need to supply a where expression. So I get a subset of those hydro lines. And um, I'm assuming you're familiar with the uh, query, query builder. I'm going to use a stream, stream order to identify a subset of my streams. And I'm going to look for everything that is stream order 4 or higher. So greater than or equal to 4. Click verify to make sure that it works. Say OK. And now I've provided everything on that tool for it to do what I want it to do. So I say OK. Now obviously it's not going to run it yet. It just got all the, the settings um, set up for that. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to intersect the two. So I want to create an intersection of my uh, line 61 pipeline and the, line, the major streams. So I need to add a new tool. So again I'm going to go to the search out of my way here and find the intersect tool. All right, and there's the one that I want. So I'm going to drop and drag that here. And again, it's empty, no background, no color, letting me know that it doesn't have everything that I need in order for it to run. So I'm going to use the connect tool and connect these up and use them both as input features. And then just to make sure that I've got everything set up right, I'm going to double click here and see if our app, my features, all right, the output feature class. So it's defaulting to um, the default geo database. That's not where I want my result. So I'm going to switch this and I'm going to put it in my project folder. I've been testing, so I've already got a crossing. So let's just cross with two. Uh, looking through the other settings here. Uh, my attributes, output type, uh, reminder about how to use these things. I look over the help and what type of intersection do I want. Uh, I want the geometry to change. I actually just want the points. So I need to make a setting here, set it to points. Say OK. All right, so now my tool's ready to run. I'm going to hit save before I run this. And then the last thing that when you're ready is to actually run this guy. And so running it like a macro. I'm going to click run here and then I'll get the same kind of dialogue that I get with running other tools that will provide information about what's happening and any errors that I might encounter. Now this is going to take a while since I have so many features in the hydro line so I'm not going to stick around for this to finish. Um, I'll come back in a moment. Alright so it finished and we're back. Now I want to look through this dialog and make sure I don't encounter any, I haven't encountered any errors. Everything looks good. Looks like the intersect worked. So I'm going to close this. Now notice something about our model. All the tools now have these drop shadows and the final data sets have these drop shadows. That gives you an indication of what steps have been run and have finished already. Um, now what would be nice is this crossings is now all the data set that I'm interested in. I'd like to add that to my map. And there's a way to, of doing this. So if I right click on that uh, let's see, I can add to display. And now I can see over here it's been added to my table of contents. 
So I'm going to save this, close it, wait for this to redraw, and I can see where all my stream car crossings are, and verify that the analysis actually worked correctly. So one of the advantages of the model tool is it may not have worked correctly, and I can redo it without having to start from square one. All right, the symbol's kind of small, but I can see all the crossings and see the selection that was used, so everything looks pretty good there. Let's see, let me turn off the hydro lines. There, I can see my major crossings. All right, that's Model Builder in a nutshell. Good luck.